أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي In this chapter, inshallah, we'll also be discussing another one of Amir al-Mu'mineen's greatest characters, which is Amir al-Mu'mineen's knowledge and understanding the depth of Amir al-Mu'mineen's knowledge. As we've previously spoken about other characteristics and different angles of the character of Amir al-Mu'mineen, in this chapter, we'll aim to look at very briefly the knowledge of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi abdul salati wassalam. Now delving into the knowledge, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gives us a few examples of what to expect from the knowledge of Ali ibn Abi Talib by stating that I am Madinatul Ilm and I'm Madinatul Ilm wa Aliyun Babuha that I am the city of knowledge and Ali ibn Abi Talib is its door or its gate. And then he goes on to say, whomever wants knowledge and wisdom should enter the city from its gates. Meaning, if you seek the knowledge that I have Rasulullah, that you should go through Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib to attain it. Amir al-Mu'mineen says himself, عَلَّمَنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَلْفَ بَابٍ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ تُفْتَحُ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ أَلْفَ بَابٍ Meaning, Amir al-Mu'mineen would say himself that Rasulullah himself taught him 1,000 doors of knowledge. And from every one of those doors, a thousand open up for Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Making it, if we calculate, a million doors of knowledge there and then within the knowledge of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And that's why no other man in history is known to have gone onto the pulpit and said, Saluni qabla an tafqiduni. Stating, ask me before you lose me. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. But you find the people of the time didn't understand Amir al-Mu'mineen's knowledge didn't understand they were dealing with an ocean, if only they asked. You'll find them asking questions that were ridiculed in the sense of a person who would stand up and ask Amir al-Mu'mineen, you know, how many hairs do I have in my head? And amongst questions like these, you'll find in Kufa one day, a person after Amir al-Mu'mineen would say, Saluni qabla an tafqiduni. You'll find, he says, that I have knowledge more about the paths of the heavens than the paths of this earth. Ask me before you lose me. And a person in the crowd in traditions, both within our books and other books in Islamic thought, you'll find a person in the crowd says to Amir al Mu'mineen, You say that you have knowledge. Amir al Mu'mineen said, Ask me. And he says, can you tell us where Jibra'il is? The tradition goes on to say that Amir al-Mu'mineen would look for moments towards the heavens and for moments towards the earth and moments to the right, moments to the left. And then he would look forward and he would say that you are Jibra'il. And you'll find this person would spread the wings and fly through the roof of the Kufa Mosque. And this tradition is mentioned within many history books to showcase to us that Amir al-Mu'mineen not only had knowledge but vision and insights and the veils were removed from him. And that's why when there's a comparison, when they say and compare different prophets in Islam with Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib amongst them would be Nabi Allah Ibrahim whereby they say that Ibrahim needed Allah to show him how he resurrects the dead in order for him to increase in certainty. Amir Munin himself says, لَوْ كُشِفَ لِيَ الْغِطَاءَ لَمَزْدَتُ يَقِينًا Meaning, if the veils were removed from me, I would not increase in certainty because I've already attained that level of certainty through the knowledge that was given to me, through the understanding that was gifted to me. 
So you'll find this on one level. And on another level, to understand Amir al-Mu'mineen's, let's say, speed. Every time Amir al-Mu'mineen would answer the question in the Khilafah of the second, you'll find on many occasions he would say himself, Amr ibn al-Khattab, on 70 or 72 different occasions, Lawla Ali lahalaka Umar. If it wasn't for Ali saving me, I would have perished. And this is all to do with knowledge. And one day, Umar ibn al-Khattab would come towards Amir al-Mu'mineen. And Amir al-Mu'mineen is asked, Oh Ali, why is it that every single time a person would ask you any question, every time you would answer nearly straight away? You don't stop. You don't contemplate about the answer. You don't think it through. You don't ask. You don't look through anything. Straight away, when someone asks you, Oh Ali, you answer. And Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib replies by saying, Oh Umar, how many fingers do you have? He says, five. He says, why didn't you think about that? Why didn't you contemplate over the fact that how many fingers do you have? He goes, well, it's, it's, it's evident to me that I have five fingers. Amir al replies by saying, this knowledge that they ask through me is evident to me as well. That I have the knowledge that they seek, and it becomes evident to me in that split second. So you can imagine the knowledge and the depth of knowledge of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. That you find him in an instance where on, in Masjid al-Kufa striking his chest, saying, ha huna la ilmun jamma. That here is an abundance of knowledge. If only I see someone fitting to give it towards. Law absartu lahu hamala. If I found people to carry this knowledge, then I would offload it. But there is an abundance in here. Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And you'll find that this knowledge, as we know, can give you immense power. And the understanding that within the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Naml refers to an incident between Prophet of Allah Sulaiman and the throne of Balqis, where he asks the people around him, whether it be jinn and ins, who can bring the throne of Balqis? And the Quran refers to a person stating, that a person that has knowledge from the book was able to bring a throne of Balqis, which was halfway across the world in a blink of an eye. And then again in the Holy Quran it states that it's enough or it suffice for Allah to be a witness and the person that has knowledge of the book. Al-Mul Kitab, meaning the knowledge of the entire book. He has and he sufficed to be a witness. So Abu Bakr one day he comes into the mosque and he asks Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, in the Quran it refers to a person saying he has knowledge from the book. And it also refers in the Quran to a person that has knowledge of the book. So just to give you an understanding, there's traditions that state that the prophets of Allah are given what we look at to be portions of Allah's greatest name to give them abilities or to allow things to be submit, submitted towards them or submit towards them. And these portions from Allah's greatest name were distributed. And the understanding and traditions tell us that Ibrahim was gifted eight, that Musa was gifted, you find three, Isa was gifted two portions, and they were able to as Isa would do, resurrect the dead. Musa would do, perform all the miracles that he performed. Ibrahim would perform all the miracles. And Rasulullah would be given out of the 73 portions, he would be given 72. So imagine that he would pass down that knowledge. And when you find Abu Bakr, when he is given the answer by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, so I would say the person that the Quran refers to having knowledge from the book is Asif bin Barkhiya, which was the wasi of Nabi Allah Sulaiman. 
And then he says, the person that has knowledge of the book, and he looks towards his side, towards Amir al muminin saying, is this person, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi abdu al So imagine the capabilities that Amir al muminin would have, and what he was capable of in terms of knowledge, ability, power, gifted to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So let's endeavor to delve into the aspects that Rasulullah gives us where he tells us that you should constantly gain knowledge, that you gain it from the cradle to the grave, that you should utilize that knowledge to perfect yourself. Not have that knowledge simply to showcase it to other people. You can learn so many books, watch so many things, but that knowledge is useless unless it's put into application. You may know everything to do with Salat, its rewards, its etiquettes, its practical aspect, how to perform it perfectly, the pronunciations. However, if you don't wake up for Salat or Subh, what benefit does that knowledge give you? Amir al muminin was passing by two youth, and the youth would look at Amir al muminin and says, Oh Ali, you are the master of eloquence. Can you tell us when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, do we stop for three seconds or five seconds? You know, is it wala dhalin or is it longer? Amir al muminin looks at these two youth and he says, Antum ila i'arabi a'malikum ahwaju min i'arabi aqwalikum. Saying to them, you in the grammar of your actions are more in need than the grammar of your speech. Meaning, that which you know, apply it first, then seek to perfect. Don't worry about the knowledge for the sake of knowledge. Are you going to utilize that knowledge? And when you're utilizing it, are you utilizing it for good means? For the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or for the pleasure of someone else? So let's take that into perspective, inshallah. Understanding that Amir al Mu'mineen. In one of his greatest characters, which was the characteristic of knowledge. Taking him as an example, let's aim to gain as much as we can from the month of Ramadan in knowledge and then try to put it into application as much as we can to perfect ourselves, to perfect each and every organ. And inshallah, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته